Hi, my name is Alan Geller. I'm the author of the book Scary Diagnosis. I'm recording this at the beginning of 2010 and I decided to record this today because I realized that uh, I passed my five plus year anniversary of taking LDN, that's low dose naltrexone, for MS uh, sometime in the summer of 2009. I was diagnosed with MS uh, after a pretty severe attack in February of 2009 and it took a couple of months to do the diagnosis and then uh, I went through the process of trying to decide whether I should do standard of care which at that time were the crab drugs Copaxon, Rebif, Avonex and Betaseron or whether I should uh, look into something else. After spending a bunch of time scouring the internet and doing some reading and reading some of the clinical trials for the um, for the standard of care drugs uh, I came across LDN and uh, to make a long story short after my neurologist uh, locally refused to prescribe it to me uh, I had a consultation with Dr. Bahari uh, the father of LDN uh, for use with MS and um, have been on it uh, ever since. Uh, in addition to my taking LDN for my MS diagnosis, my wife who has had cancer twice also takes LDN on a, on a daily basis and that was after having a conversation with Dr. Bahari about uh, LDN's use of, or potential use in cancer and at that point in time he told me actually that his wife was taking it on a daily basis uh, as, a, as a preventative uh, for cancer. So uh, here I am, uh, almost six years later, uh, considering myself extremely fortunate because I haven't had uh, any additional attacks uh, or, or at least severe attacks during that period of time. There's the odd little thing here and there that I, I sometimes wonder whether I can attribute to MS or just to the fact that I'm going to turn 55 this year uh, in a couple weeks. Also, I wanted to make this uh, little YouTube today because I, I wanted to make it clear that uh, patients' expectations with respect to LDN need to be realistic. Uh, I read a recent posting by a PhD who posts regularly about uh, MS and, and recently about using LDN for MS. And she spent a lot of time talking about the fact that LDN wasn't dealing with her uh, with her her long-term previous symptoms prior to her taking LDN. And that's not at all what my understanding of LDN was all about when I decided to take it. Dr. Bahari was very clear with me that uh, there was very little likelihood of LDN addressing any of the symptoms that I had from prior attacks, uh, that the purpose of taking LDN on an ongoing basis was really uh, about preventing any additional attack. I did a, another YouTube on LDN and um, I won't get into some of that same information but I did talk in that first YouTube about uh, some of the other things that I do in addition to LDN. I tried to make it clear that I can't definitively attribute the success that I've had uh, w which in my opinion has been amazing uh, to, to just LDN or even LDN at all or, or any of those other things but clearly uh, I, I believe that um, combining uh, the allopathic treatments, the mainstream medical treatments that I've experienced and also the alternative treatments uh, put me in a position to experience my, my best possible health on a short term basis and what is now turning into a long term basis and so that's what it's all about so uh, just to review uh, what I do and what I've done over the past five years and what the results are, let's start with the results. I haven't had a, um, a serious attack or perhaps any attacks uh, since uh, t beginning LDN in the summer of 2004. Uh, that's additional MS attacks. Uh, I'm also happy to report that my wife remains in remission. Uh, from the two bouts of cancer that she had, the last one being malignant melanoma. There are a couple of diets that are recommended for um, MS and autoimmune uh, issues and one's called the Swank diet, the other one's the best, best, best bet diet. But uh, I, I think what you do is you use them as, as a starting point and then figure out um, what's best for you, what's, what feels best for you. Same thing with the whole blood type thing. I don't think that any um, general program can address the specifics of each individual's biochemistry and genetics. 
And so what you're, what you're really trying to do is get to a point where you have a customized and personalized uh, approach, not only with diet, but with uh, any of the allopathic mainstream things that you do and any of the alternative things that you add in. Um, with respect to drugs, the only drugs that I take uh, for my MS diagnosis are, uh, are LDN and also uh, I supplement with uh, testosterone. Uh, I think hormone supplementation is absolutely a part of any short-term and long-term health strategy, particularly if you're facing some kind of a health challenge. Uh, supplements, which I get asked about a lot, uh, I'll give you the list. I don't take all of them every day and um, I think that uh, you need to listen to your body as to what, you're, what you should be taking regularly and what you can uh, take on, on a more um, as needed basis. So for me, uh, I take enzymes pretty much every day. Uh, I use Wobenzymes, which is a readily available brand. I think it's out of Germany. Um, I also take some pancreatic enzymes, which are a little more specialized. Uh, I take probiotics on a regular basis, uh, B12, which I actually inject under doctor's care. Uh, it's methylcobalamin, not cyanocobalamin. I take large doses of D3, have for quite some time now. One of my doctors, one, the head of the box doc that I mentioned in my book, um, was way ahead of the curve on D3 and if you're going to be taking D3 you need to be taking some calcium and you need to be taking some magnesium and you need to be taking more magnesium than calcium so one to one uh, is not the way you want to go on that. Uh, I do take niacin, uh, I also take garlic and the occasional Google extract uh, which are all targeting uh, relatively high cholesterol. I'm going to do a separate YouTube on cholesterol um, Given that uh, MS is a demyelinating disease and myelin is made up mostly of cholesterol, uh, I don't think it's a good idea for um, anyone with any kind of a health challenge to be taking, uh, any kind of demyelinating health challenge to be taking um, any of the statins or any of the other uh, cholesterol drugs. So beyond uh, the niacin, the garlic, and the Google lipids, uh, I also take vitamin E on a regular basis very regular basis and evening primrose oil on a, on a regular basis. Um, vitamin C is certainly in there as well. When I do take it, I usually take it in fairly large doses. You can work your way up. You take it to bowel tolerance, which means you generally uh, to find your dose. You take a little bit too much. You, uh, you get the runs and you back off. I take between three and five grams when I do take it. So to summarize, uh, here I am five plus years on LDN, I am doing all these other things and several other things above and beyond that, but my results in my opinion and certainly I think in the opinion of most of my doctors have been really impressive. Uh, uh, my cognitive abilities have, if anything, improved. Uh, I don't have the, the level of fatigue that I did have. Um, I certainly uh, haven't suffered any severe additional attacks or, or perhaps any attacks at all um, since, since taking LDN. And um, when I look back over the last five years, uh, I, can, I can safely say that I'm probably more healthy now than I was for the 10 year period before that before my diagnosis. And so there actually has been a, a very positive side to this whole experience for me, not only the writing of, of my book, but um, dedicating myself to not only researching this, um, but also implementing some of these things and having the opportunity to um, experiment it with and, uh, and, and to understand some of these things. And one of the best parts of the process has been to be in contact with other patients because I'm a firm believer, as my book focuses on, uh, in being a proactive patient. And in order to be a proactive patient, you need to be an educated patient. And you need to have that, um, that information base so that you can ask good questions and you can help direct uh, the choices that are being made with respect to your health and wellness.